Welcome back guys. Today we will talk about F1 design that I did and I think you will truly enjoy it because a uh, new workflow that I worked on for some time and I created something like a fusion between ZBrush and Fusion 360 and I always wanted to do F1 and show organic shape how it can be done. So you have ZBrush creativity or the workflow of ZBrush and you have that precision of uh, Fusion 360. It's a little bit tricky, but not impossible. And I wanted to do it with the free form, which I will explain in this video, instead of doing it with solids, because you do control the surface, but not as good. So let me share the screen with you and show you what I mean by that. Okay. So here for the starters, since I'm a designer and I always give lectures about it uh, the, these are these are all the blueprints and the reference board that I use to design F1 I downloaded a bunch of formulas there are some scientific uh, science fiction ones to the real ones and I explore them this is very beneficial when you're designing because it will give you possibility to learn about everything for example I the biggest problem that I had in design was the rear of F1, which I had no clue that it goes like this. Even though I watch F1 all the time, I completely forgot that it has aerodynamics like this that pull the air. And I watched 2023 Ferrari and I said, okay, let's design it. So the next step, as I said, I wanted to move to ZBrush and I did. And when I started, uh, the main point of this design was to keep it not too many changes. And I would uh, just design it from a sphere in ZBrush and move it and cut it. It's a simple technique where that, that I used for it, just stretching, moving in ZBrush. This gave me a great creativity because of the, the powers of ZBrush. And ZBrush can make very cool shapes when it comes to the hard surface that is organic. Not that Fusion can do it or some other software, but ZBrush for me is really strong in that area. And once I did that, I had this basic shape and then I said I will sketch a little bit in 2D so I can choose the right one. And I sketched and eventually I got to a couple solutions that I immediately translated into 3D. And I wanted to have a little bit exploration, so I got these three. And I sent it to my friend we discussed it together. He always helps me with projects. And there was a question, should I go with this one? Because it had a potential in my head. I could see it in the future a bit different. So maybe I will sketch it later, but for now, no. Or this one that was very agile and fast. And I said, okay, I will move with the number two. And the choice was because of the aerodynamism and uh, aerodynamics, pardon me, that uh, showed very agile racer car. I also closed it, even though people told me not to do it, but I wanted to have a closed area and I will show you what I did in that because I didn't show it on our station. So when I had that, next step was to explore everything and to check the possibilities. And slowly I started to flesh out this concept. Uh, this meant that I will be going through many things and many iterations in this and the shapes had to be agile i had to have enough detail on this model that would be able to design later in fusion 360. why did i need to have enough detail well i will tell you why because fusion 360 when you work with form quite taxing on your brain and uh, it's not anymore a creativity flow it's more of a technical flow but I had to do both in the next steps. However, before I entered, the solution for me was to design everything from the body, how it will look, to the main elements and to the connections to the wheels. And uh, so I had to have that basic mechanical detail that I can develop later. Let me show you. The model was progressing and developing and the biggest problem soon I will realize in the design was how do I connect the front, the, the, the front wheel parts and chassis to the car. It was very interesting to do it, 
and as you can see the shape started to shapen up and uh, the chassis was connecting and I was learning a lot about it and I will show you in Fusion 360 how I developed that because I'm, I will post after this video the part of that and eventually it was a design that went forward forward and forward as it always goes and progresses and eventually I got something like this this was my main design and main solution of the design everything was working I had all the elements positioned the cockpit was able to be opened and I was very happy with this I was very happy and hesitant to try in Fusion 360 so when I did that next step was Fusion 360 uh, so let's talk about Fusion 360 the model looked like this when I entered it so pretty cool even in render it looked cool, I want to show you that when I rendered it, it looked pretty dope to be honest and I knew I was on a good track to design something very cool and unorthodox how do you design with form? Well, this is how do you design with form it's literally re-topo of the design and form works a little bit different than the rest of software but it's very similar it gives you great control like a sub D and I'm now pulling some surfaces so I understand and it can give you really really cool effects but it's very taxing I can tell you that it's very taxing when you're designing it but here it is how it, the mesh looks it's literally like you're in a blender or Maya or any other software and you just pull the surfaces until you match it with your design and I was designing around it trying to, to do it so you need to have basic knowledge of free top of everything and eventually the, the design was progressing really fast but as I said the biggest challenge was to bounce between the design and technicality because technically it's very taxing on the brain to do both in this manner but I managed to do it and I was positioning the elements as you can see which eventually led to this and when I got here, time was to design the chassis and everything and this was very interesting because I had to cut the surfaces so I'm going back between sub-D and non-sub-D surface but <laughs> this is a CAD surface which is really cool and I maintained to create it eventually and eventually I got design like this this is the final design, I want to show you the chassis is designed in a pretty cool manner I have rendered it, I will show you later the brake is there, everything is there and now was the time to put in some cut lines and detail but Kisho doesn't recognize the solid without, without, the, without the, 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 the thickness and why am I telling you that? because I want to show you Let me show you only this. We don't need anything else. And so you understand. Okay, you can see the surface from here. Uh, you select the surface, and once you have it, you go to the form, and there is a thicken that can help you okay upgrade the body okay and you get a chance to give it thickness once it has a thickness you can play with it and you can translate it into a solid oh no did it crash really no it didn't okay okay something went wrong but the same thing so it didn't give us thickness and I will tell you why this is perfect that it happened so I can move immediately to this we have repair body here and cancel when you repair the body it shows you the mistakes it has you click auto repair and it will automatically repair every uh, every edge that's too much every every problem triangles five gones and so on does break as I said it's a technicality after all but eventually does it 
And as you can see, it pointed, pointed where the five gons are and so on, and it translates into this. So there's surfaces and solids. And this is all now solids, which is perfect because now, as you can see on the element here, I could, uh, I could combine it like a solid and cut it out. Eventually I get, got great shapes. Thinking about the cockpit, as I said, it has a mechanism that opens the cockpit. And it works. It really works because this arm, it goes like this. At the same time, you'll see this in a lot of my designs where when I design that there is some functional part. This goes forward. This at the same time happens. I didn't animate it, but I'm doing something so you will see that also. And then it goes back like that. Driver can get in. And it has a very functional cockpit, which is very cool to have. So with solids that we converted to, and you convert them here, modify utilities. First you repair the body, and then you convert it from T-spine to B-wrap. And you get all the solids, and now the key shot can read it. So when I had that, rest was very simple. It looks like this in key shot. And I placed all the materials, everything, and the scenario. And it was very fun. I also have the red one, which I didn't show, but it's currently work in progress. And it will look really dope also when I do it in a Ferrari colors. That's the next step. And I have a couple more teams. I want to do them all. And we got the design. This can be 3D printed. It's a high quality surface that can be 3D printed, get can be translated. And many other things can be done with it, which is amazing to have a CAD model like this, you know. For me, this is completely new, a completely fresh thing to do. And eventually I got render like this. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube and my art station, feel free to, because this is my name, Darko Markovic, also known as Darmer. And I hope that you enjoy this, because I think that this technique has a really good ability of making amazing stuff. Former one was just an example. I will be doing something more complex than this, but I think it gave brilliant results. And I hope that you will try to use ZBrush with Fusion 360 form. Subscribe button if you haven't.